Hey travelers, Mag here on the second of two days finishing off the remaining prefectures here on Honshu, Japan's main island. We're going to begin in the morning here in Yanago to put a check in the box for the Tori Prefecture. After that, we're going to go ahead and cross just over the prefecture line into Shimani, and there we're going to go into Yasugicho, where there's being a Sido event hosted at 10 a.m. I've never been to a Sido event in Japan, and there's only a couple of attendees, so I'm kind of excited to see what it has in store for us. From there, we're going to do a little bit of makeup for what we missed yesterday. I'm going to head into Matsui and go see the castle there, because I really want to, and I know that I at least have the time to do so today. Then, we'll be moving into our third prefecture for the day in Yamaguchi. There we'll be circling in to Iwakuni. Now, we're not going to have a lot of time in Iwakuni, so I know I'm targeting a virtual at an old bridge. I'll get at least a traditional, and if, and there's a big if, the timing is in my favor, I'm going to take the ropeway up and go see the castle there in Iwakuni. Fingers crossed, but it's going to be tight, so we'll have to see, because at the end of the day, before the sun goes down, We'll be linking up with Inextricable Fate in Hiroshima, and that is a hard deadline for us. So despite the fact that we're starting at sunrise, we have a big day planned that's gonna carry us all the way until the sun sets down on us. So let's get out there quickly and see what it has in store. Come on, let's go. I could barely contain my excitement this morning, waiting for the sun to ascend above the horizon to begin my adventure here in Yonago. Located on the west edge of Tatori Prefecture, this is the second biggest city in the prefecture with nearly 150,000 people living here. I had originally intended to find some geocaches to claim the prefecture last night, but instead decided to wait until this morning to do so. In the big cities in Japan, and actually the little cities for that matter, this is my absolute favorite time of day. The nightlife can be pretty busy. A lot of people getting off work pretty late. They go out, do karaoke, have some drinks, long dinners, a lot of fun on the streets. During the day, people are moving back and forth with business. There's tons of traffic, cars on the road, people walking everywhere, bicycles. But in this magical hour, right after the sun rises for the first hour and a half or so, there's very few people out and you've got the place all to yourself. And that, that is when I shine. There are only a handful of geocaches hidden in the downtown area of Yonago, and they are all clustered within about a mile of each other. I very strategically found a hotel right in the middle of the listings so that when the sun rose over the new day, I would have the perfect excuse to go out on a walking tour. My timing this morning is dictated by the CETO event beginning at 10 a.m., which is just down the road, so I know I have a little bit of time to kill between here and there. As I made my way past the Yonago City Cultural Hall, I was pleased to see there were several statues surrounding the building. Some some were a bit puzzling as to what they were intended to represent, while others gave me a little bit of a chuckle with the humorous story they told. The last one in the set had me thinking of another form of conveyance which I love to use to go geocaching. It's anybody's guess as to what most of these pieces might be meant to represent, but this one? Oh, this one is definitely telling me I should get back in the kayak again. To ensure I managed my time well this morning, I chose to walk out to the furthest option and then work my way back from there. This route carried me for the better part of a mile past the Yanago Cultural Hall, beyond the City Museum of Art, and on the way toward Minatoyama Park. Since my timing for the day was just a bit too early, I lamented at not being able to go into the Yanago City Museum of Art and toured a bit further. It is said to feature a spectacular collection of paintings and photographs. The strategy that makes a day like today able to be accomplished on time is backwards planning. And it's something I could do an entire video on, but essentially I'll use today as a great example of the importance of backwards planning. Inextricable Fate gets off work at 5.30. That's my must be in Hiroshima time. So I know from Iwakuni, it's an hour to get there. I must leave Iwakuni no later than 4.30. Gave myself about an hour in Iwakuni. Backwards plan, I got a three hour drive to get to Iwakuni from my previous target, which means 12.30 I need to be leaving from the castle at Matsue. It's gonna take about an hour, that's 11.30. The Cedo's at 10, that takes about an hour. As you can see just from that, the timing is tight. I know how much time I have in each space. I have my essential targets that I must do, those aren't overly time consuming. And then I have my want to do's, like the castle. Knowing what time I have to be ending by at each place gives me a good gauge on where I'll be and ensures I'll stay on time throughout the day. Unlike yesterday. Having the city streets all to myself like this is a bit like the quiet before the storm. 
I know that this calm, peaceful setting cannot possibly last. Soon enough, there's going to be a whirlwind of activity all around me. But until then, I fully intend to enjoy the quiet of the morning. There's only one stop in town with a trail to explore, and wouldn't you know it, that's where we're actually gonna start off. We're gonna climb up to the top of this little mountain here and see what we can find right at the peak. And that little mountaintop is host to none other than the Yunago Castle ruins. While the castle itself was lost during the war, the stone walls, foundation stones, and the history has been retained throughout the years. I am not entirely sure what I'm going to find once I reach the top, but I fully expect that it is going to be a fantastic view of the city of Yunago. This expectation, coupled with the geocache that I know is waiting for me at the top, gives me the motivation I need to continue climbing step after step. And there is certainly no lack of those. Every time I turn a corner, I see another staircase winding its way ever upward. What better way than to climb to the top to squeeze in an exhilarating morning workout? The thing about climbing stairs like this, is it feels like no matter how many you climb, there's still more left to go. <sighs> Yanago Castle was built as a fortress by Yamana Munuyuke in 1467. It remained as a fairly small castle for more than a century until it came under the control of Kikawa Hiroi, who had conquered most of the region from the Yamago clan. He assigned control to Nakamura Kazutada, who transformed it into a four-story structure within 10 years, moving his clan in from the Odaka Castle. At first glance, it would appear it's all in the name, right? The climbing stone wall. But the next glance says, whatever you do, don't climb on the stone wall. Control of the now substantially larger castle changed hands several times over the next few decades until in 1632, it came into the possession of the Arao clan. They maintained control of the region and the castle for 11 successive generations until in 1869, it was sold to the samurai. Victory is in sight. Just a little bit higher climb now, and we made it to the top of these castle ruins. Now having climbed above the treetops, the view over the city of Yunago has become phenomenal. Give me an example of a hint that is both specific and unhelpful at the same time. I present to you, Stonewall. That's nice. But with a lot of patience, and I mean a lot of patience, and systematic searching, you might just be lucky enough to come up with the find. That's our check in the box for Totori, right there. Geocache up, one prefecture down, two to go. Making that find gave me the energy that I needed to continue the ascent all the way to the top. It is from here, standing on the highest point of the castle ruins of Yanago, that I achieved the best view of the city. I need more than just a quick moment after that climb to catch my breath anyway, so I soak it all in. If you ever question the sanity of making a long climb to the top like this, like I was along the way, just try to keep in mind the view waiting for you at the end of the road. This is basically the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Makes it all worthwhile. With my feet firmly back on the ground, I head back to start at Yanago Station to visit Don Don Square. The statue of this train rising toward the heavens with children flying beneath dominates the view. There's no way I would have been able to find this one without the hint. I was barely able to find it with the hint because it takes a little bit of a reach of faith because there's absolutely no way to see that one waiting for you. Then I set off just down the road across the prefecture line from Tatori into Shimane. Sometimes circling a ground zero is a wasted effort, and sometimes it's literally what's required to get the job done. And in this case, mission accomplished. Kanji is complex, so I can't always understand what I'm reading, but sometimes the pictures tell me all I need to know. As the Chick-fil-A cows want you to know just how delicious that chicken is, this chicken wants you to know how delicious that shrimp is. It's going full circle here, isn't it? This one's at least a little bit more in the land of the familiar. Love those face plates. Haven't seen many of these in Japan. The trains are usually a pretty good indicator of how big the city is or how far into the country you are. The bigger the train, the bigger the city and population. As you can see, Yasugi is not exactly a big city. This is definitely more on the countryside. 
Each of the trains that zooms by is only two to three cars deep. Then I spot a train not moving at all. And wouldn't you know it, this appears to be the host of a geocache. Spotting this train geocache, I immediately became concerned because I'm not a big fan of train hides. But luck was on my side because somehow, some way, despite the odds, it was in the very first place that I looked. Do you see it? How about now? That could have been tough. Having successfully found each of the geocaches hidden here in Yusugi and still having a little bit of time on my side before the Sido event, I decide to head into the Wako Museum for a little bit of a tour. Roughly translated, the name of the museum means unique steel produced by Tatara, and that is exactly what it is. A peek into the history of iron production and unique Tatara steel making techniques employed here in the Chugoku mountain area. On display, locked within glass cases, are master-crafted pieces of steel to admire. Tatara steel was widely produced due to the fine iron sand and plentiful forest resources in the region. In fact, during the latter half of the Edo period, more than 80% of domestic iron production originated right here in the Chugoku Mountains. While the master-crafted blades are certainly the highlight of the museum, that is far from the only thing to be learned here. The iron produced here in Yasugi was used for many other purposes as well, shipped to production sites all around the country, driving industrial development. It is a great place to learn about the general production of iron ore and the tools of the trade to make it happen. But of course, it is also a great place to visit to learn about the many Japanese swords of legend. Sometimes you just have to let the geocache guide you to the best places in town. And this time around, getting the history of the iron production here in Yasugi the Waku Museum delivered in spades. Now, on to that cash in trash out event. On the way over to the Sido event, I can't help but notice across the water the sandy beaches of Nagiasa Park at the base of Mount Tokomiyama. If I ever make it back to the area for some camping, I expect that's exactly where I'll be bedding down. I have arrived here at the ground zero for the Sido event, cash in trash out. We've got about 10 minutes till the start time, and I expect the attend one attendee and the host to arrive right on time and get this party started because the Japanese are not anything if not punctual. Somewhere up there on that mountaintop is an ancient tomb. I actually tried to figure out how to get up there on my own. Could not do it. Yeah, all the paths I took just lead up to the front doors of houses. But I know the CO is going to know where to go. So we'll just go ahead and go up together and clean our way up to the top. The thing is, Japan is one of the cleanest countries anywhere in the world I've been to. Despite the fact they removed the trash cans countrywide, you still don't really see trash out on the streets. Even in the cities, it's a rarity. So, while I'm gonna do this CEDO and I'm gonna go after every single piece of trash I can find, I don't expect optimal results. So I'll be lucky if I fill half my bag, which is a good thing, by the way, a very good thing. When I say punctual, I don't mean that as anything of an exaggeration. In fact, I'm pretty sure I saw the one attendee and the event host about 10 minutes ago say hello and walk up the trail by themselves. So I'm now here, a few minutes past the event start time, standing alone. And I suspect I will be because I don't think they were waiting for the start time to go. Oh well, let's head up. And look there, we have more stairs. No surprise by now. Admittedly, it did take me a little bit to find these stairs leading up the mountain as the trail is completely unmarked. However, seeing those two people I thought might be attending the event, I did watch where they walked off to. Look, 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 check it out, check it out, check it out. It's a piece of trash. <laughs> it does exist. I'm gonna add it to my bag. Now I've got a little glass bottle and a piece of tape. Ooh, I'm making progress. These stairs gradually wind their way up the mountain toward the Himaduka ancient tomb. According to the legend, more than 1300 years ago, the daughter of Natsuomi Inomaru was attacked and killed by a crocodile. This tomb on top of the mountain is the burial place where she was laid to rest after the attack. It's a little thing, but having an event log book to add your name to, or your stamp, makes kind of a big difference for the event. Love it. Made the pilgrimage to the top, Signed the CEDO event logbook, got to see the ancient tomb up here, and collected an entire two pieces of trash along the way. This is probably why you don't see a lot of CEDO events on the map in Japan, because it's just a clean place. Now with our tour up this mountain complete, it is on to our final prefecture of the day, after of course Matsui Castle, so let's go check that out first. 
My time spent geocaching around Yasugi put a big check in the box for Shimane Prefecture, but there is no way I'm going to pass up on the opportunity to check out Matsui Castle, particularly not after missing Himeji Castle yesterday. Like Himeji Castle, this is one of the 12 remaining original castle towers in Japan. Out of those 12 castles, it is the second largest and third tallest. Many of the castles across the country were dismantled in observance of an order given at the beginning of the Meiji era. Only through the combined efforts of Takagaki Ganpachi, a former retainer of the Matsue Domain, and the family of Katsube Motoeman, a wealthy farmer, was this castle preserved when so many others were destroyed. Like Himeji Castle, Matsui Castle was built for war, but was fortunate enough to never have to see battle. Do my eyes deceive me? Or perhaps do we have here another... geocache and a stone wall. He looks rather happy to see me. This castle was completed in 1611, just a few short years after the final decisive battle of feudal Japan. Following the battle of Sekigahara in 1600, Todoji and his father, Yoshiharu of the Horio clan, were granted dominion over the provinces of Izumo and Oki. Together, they decided on Matsui as the site for their castle. The town of Matsui, formed around the castle, is a direct result of its construction. The undeniably elegant sweep of the castle's roofs and decor is often compared to the wings of a chidori, earning it the nickname of the Clover Castle. The timing is running fantastically today. I am psyched to be able to show you inside a Matsui castle. Come on, let's go. When viewed from the outside, it appears that there are only four sections of this castle, but like Himeji, it is deceptive. There are actually five stories and a basement. Entering the four building, guests are required to remove their shoes and exchange them for a pair of slippers so as not to damage the original flooring throughout the castle. The good news is I'm allowed to take video in the castle so long as it's not flash photography. The bad news is there's virtually no lighting in here, so. It's very dark, you gotta give your eyes a moment to adjust to even start to see the exhibits. The lowest level of the castle includes a well and a salt warehouse, indicating that those within were prepared to weather out a siege if the need arose. Many original artifacts are on display throughout each floor of the castle. This is a walk through history only available in a few places. Yeah, these little holes here you see along the bottoms of the wall are anything but innocent. This is where they would rain down absolute murder and destruction on anybody attempting to take the castle. On the tour through the castle, you will notice these murder holes along each wall and each floor. And those murder holes come in a wide variety of sizes. This larger size is made to put huge stones and roll them straight down on the attackers. Wouldn't want to be attacking a castle in the samurai age. No, thank you. The murals on display within the castle are the works of Fudin Adachi, an artist born in Matsue City. Created in 1957, they tell the story of the Matsue Domain. As with several of the other castles we've already visited, they really believe in those steep stairs. These are no joke. Every step, you're gaining elevation. In July of 2015, Matsue Castle became the fifth castle in the nation to be designated as a national treasure. This had been the first such designation in 63 years. To achieve this prestigious recognition, two conditions are necessary. First, it must be preserved in its original state, and secondly, the construction date must be proven. The second criterion was finally met in 2012 when two talismans marked with a date were discovered at the base of the pillars in the basement. Each time you climb up to a new floor, it gets a little bit brighter than the floor before because they actually open up the windows and it gets a little bit smaller too. We're about to really taper out at the top here. Climbing up to the fifth floor, we reach the highest part of the castle, the watchtower, which provides a 360 degree view of the surrounding area, unobscured by any walls. You can walk completely around the exterior platform and enjoy a view of the city of Matsue. The top floor of the castle is undoubtedly always my favorite place to visit. You get the best view of the city and the cool breeze comes across and it's nice. I imagine the lords of the castle always just hung out on the top floor and only actually went to the castle when they had to or maybe to stay warm in the winter. Pretending, for a few minutes at least, to be a lord of the castle, I too hung out at the top floor and looked out over the city, thinking about the rest of the day still ahead. Wow! What a busy morning it's been. 
We began our day in Yanago at sunrise, working our way through several geocaches in the city to put a check in the box to Totori. After that, we crossed right over the prefecture line into Yasugi so that we could go through Shimani prefecture as well. Once again, we geocached our way through the city and then attended a Sido event that brought us up to an ancient tomb. We finished things off with a trip to Matsui Castle where we got to tour the castle grounds and now we're about to head into Iwakuni. That is plenty of video for this set. So I'm gonna go ahead and break up what's gonna happen in Iwakuni into our next video. Thank you guys for joining me on this adventure through Totori and Shimane prefectures. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, stay tuned for updates, and I'll see you out on the trails.